But as I always says, the, the, health, the, the health and safety of the fighters is what is paramount. And so there's a kind of moral and an ethical question. Both fighters have to ask themselves. Pro boxing fans, we're here, back at your call. Another week, another interview, Tunde Ajayi. Shadow boxing again, mate. How's it, how's it going? How's life? You know what? You know what I'm shadow boxing? Because I actually forgot it uh, in one interview I done the other day. And the guy, I saw, I read a comment, and the guy said, Welcome well, to the trademark um, shadow boxing. So I said, You know what? Cool. Thank you very much, sir. I'm going to get back on it. So, yeah, it is what it is. Let's talk about why you're here this week. Actually, one of your fighters fighting earlier on in the card. Uh, Joel, you know, we know about him. We know he's coming through the ranks, the embryonic stage. Yes, sir. Talk to me about... Sorry, Dude. Manny. Yo. Bro, I'm just at the back doing an interview with... Uh, oh, yeah, I haven't cool. Sorry, sorry. Like, all, like all good. TV. Yeah, no, it's all good. Um, yeah, talk to me about Joel, man. Obviously, uh, yeah. an another win, another W, but just part of the stage that he's at the embryonic stage, yes. just going through the ranks. Just talk to me about you know, his progression so far. Yeah, I, feel, I, I was saying after the fact, uh, it must be a little bit frustrating for him because you know, he's levels above what he's fighting at at the moment. You know, he's actually ready for, in my opinion, like a, a, a southern area title. But as a manager, as a good manager, you don't want to make, you know, every, each fighter has you know, their gifts. You know, you look at Anthony Yard, at this stage, he was just blowing guys out. So you, you move fast, but then it's kind of like a catch-22 situation because you knock people out in the early stages of your career, and then people say, not that you worry too much, but you, you know, you, you hear these things, you know, he needs more rounds. And then you, and then you go the rounds, and then it's like, he ain't got no power. You, you see what I'm saying? So it's always down to the management team to just be easy, let the fighters, you know, get the experience they need according to the, their ability. We know you're seeing it. Joe is winning these fights easy. Like, he's, he ain't even coming out of second gear. And for us who train with him every day, we know that what we see in the gym, we're not even seeing 20% of, you know, I was talking to Will Jones, you know, and he's like, bro, this guy <laughs> is a dangerous guy. <laughs> you understand? But, um, uh, it's like for me, uh, as his trainer and manager, I'm, I'm very happy with his progression. And uh, they will come, you know, there are going to be fights where he's going to have to show what he's got, you know, his ability. But so far, so good. I'm very, very happy with his performance. Punch perfect again uh, against a, a guy that I thought was going to throw back at, at least. But he just, he just didn't even throw. <laughs> I think he threw about two punches back in return. Um, but yeah, I'm looking for Joe six, eight rounds. I think next one, an eight rounder. And then I feel we'll see another um, part of Joe's uh, arsenal. You, you've been through this way. I'm sure now criticism and you know, negative feedback sort of brushes over your head because I can remember being with you guys in the early days of Anthony Odds. Yes. Um, career and there was a lot of talk. Uh, Tunde should have been in this corner. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Anthony Odds fighting nobody's brother. Nobody's. Brother. We've been there, so I'm sure now that experience yes. has le left you actually in good stead going forward. Absolutely, because this is the thing. Like you can rush, but you know, me and Ant's journey has been one now where I can take that experience, take even the the, the negative comments and and what have you, and really just help Joe navigate himself in the right way. So when it's time, it's time. You can't really listen to people who are not in there, people that are just, you know, visual fans. We know how difficult it is, and, and, and if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. So I just feel that the experience that I've had with Anthony and other fighters, but mainly Anthony, you know, that's what people probably know me for or recognise me for, is just beautiful for, for Joe. And uh, at times you have to really just slow him down and just say, look, relax, relax, because you're in a division um, even on a British level, where you've got guys that are very, very experienced, and um, his time will come. 
do you want to quickly just move away and talk about boxing? Uh, in America, we saw David Benavidez beat uh, Demetrius Andrade. Yes. Look, a lot of people are saying now, listen, that Canelo fight needs to happen. Big Mexican showdown, both going to bring big fans to, to, to the place. But one thing that you guys always say, well, you say, everything is timing. Everything is timing. Let's put that into that perspective. Is everything timing for David Benavidez to be fighting Canelo at this stage of his career? I think if he's ambitious, which I believe he is, I think it is. You know, it, it is, and it could be a passing of the torch. And if it isn't a passing of the torch, he's young enough to take that experience and dominate after that, and that's how I feel with David Benavides. I feel he's, he's, he's so young, 26 years, and he ain't slowing down. He's gonna get, he absolutely is gonna get better. So to go out there and put that type of performance against a two weight world champion, an undefeated world champion, shows uh, what lies ahead for Benavides. And I think it's a great fight. Whether, whether Canelo wants to grant him that opportunity, We'll wait and see because Canelo, he can have the Charlo fight. I'm hearing that the Mungaya fight is done. You know, I'm hearing the Mungaya. So basically, you've got Mungaya as a possibility and you've got Charlo as a possibility. But who does Canelo want to take that risk in fighting a young, hungry, um, a young, hungry fighter like David Benavides? We have to wait and see. Um, do you want to talk about other news that broke in the UK in regards to Conor Ben? I don't know if you want to talk much about this, but he's been rejected his application for his British Boxing Board of Control license. Um, a lot of people are saying it's not going to leave the fight with Chris Eubank Jr. in jeopardy, but can you see why that was done by, by the British Boxing Board of Control? Can you see? Yeah, I can see your names, your names on your trainer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um... Listen, I, I mean, I, I listened to uh, Eddie Hearn saying, and he's quite adamant. <laughs> he's going ahead with a fight, you know. So it is kind of a shame, you know. I, I really want the British Boxing Board of Control uh, being the governing body of the fight, but at the same time, you cr kind of have to credit the British Boxing Board of Control and not for not being overpowered. Uh, by money, I guess, because that's what it's about, and it's, 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 it's a money fight. So, again, it's not being judgment on any side. Eddie Hearn wants that fight, you know, and, and you got to credit him because he, he doesn't want to take the fight to Saudi Arabia. He wants the British fans to get a fight, actually, which I feel the British public really want to see, but are not happy with the fact that, again, I can't talk legally, but the fact that there's a case that's looming that hasn't been resolved. So I can see both sides. I can see where both sides want it and the other side doesn't want it. But as I always says, the, the, health, the, the health and safety of the fighters is what is paramount. And so there's a kind of moral and an ethical question. Both fighters have to ask themselves, do you want, to be, do you want a fight to go ahead where there's a big shadow of doubt around it. And please God, nothing does happen. But just supposing there was a fatality. Remember that the, the sole objective of boxing is to render your opponent unconscious. <laughs> That's what it's about, it's professional fighting. And how sad it would be for our sport, for someone to be injured. And remember, you're talking about the son of a father who injured someone to the point where they can't walk and talk properly. Mm. So this is very, very, it's, it's a very touchy subject. You know, and I feel that that's to be kept, we need to think, I think as a boxing community first, I think you need, we need to think about this because we don't want another Michael Watson. You know, that's the realness of the whole thing. We don't, want a, we don't want another Michael Watson and then say, oh, you know, maybe we shouldn't have sanctioned the fight. And I think that's what I think everyone needs to knock their heads together. I understand that Connor's legal team is, is, is on this case. Uh, if it can be resolved, then who better than the British Boxing Board of Control to govern the situation? If Eddie is adamant that he's going to continue with the fight, 
and then so be it. You know, one thing as a boxing fan, I want to see the fight. I definitely want to see the fight, but as I said, I'm not, I'm not managing, I'm not training either of the fighters, I'm not a promoter, um, and I'm not the British Boxing Board of Control, so, uh, but let's hope that they can sort it out between them and, and get this fight cracking. Final one before I let you go. Uh, we're a month away from 2024. Name me them three fights that you want to see in 2024. <coughs> Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury. <laughs> Gotta start with the bricks, innit? That's a big boy fight. I don't care what anyone tells me. AJ against Tyson Fury. Shakur Stevenson versus Tank Davis is another fight. I would love to see that fight. And Shakur, listen, Shakur against any of them, Tank or Devon Haney, I think is one of the, it's got to be up there. You know, those are the three hot. You can even throw Tiafimo in that little mix, that little mix there. So those lightweight boys, oh, 140 boys now, um, definitely. So that's the second, I know it's not a single fight, but that, that little crew there. And then lastly, mm, let me think. Inui. A Nui against Tank, yeah, that's a fight. I don't know how it's gonna, <laughs> you know, I don't know how it's gonna happen, but a Nui might just do a Manny Pacquiao thing. Like I think, like from what I see, he can do that. He can do a Manny Pacquiao. He can do a Manny Pacquiao and go up because I know I, I know Devon was saying that Uzi really beat. Yeah, he got a, a, a good victory against Cool Boy Step, uh, but the way he took out Stephen Fulton, amazing. Amazing, and he's got skill, he's got time, and he's got precision. So I just feel Tank against Inui is a, a fantasy fight that can become reality. Uh, so let's get that. So AJ versus Fury, uh, Tank versus Shakur, Devon, or Tiafimo, and lastly, Tank versus Inui. <laughs> I didn't expect that last one. You threw in a wild card, but yeah, that, there well, we go. This last Tunde, AJ. Tunde, it's a pleasure all to talk to yourself. Um, have a good Christmas, man, and a good New Year, and uh, hopefully we get to hear some news about Antonio before that. And then, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll speak soon. Thank you very much, as always, mate. What's up, man? Appreciate that. Okay, bro. You're always making this. I know, bro. What can I do, man? Everything is timing, bro.